It is not worth it to play the game. I lost everything that I had worked for, for years. John Stossel report, True Confessions, right after this. An armed robber makes off with a few hundred dollars, and he's front page news. A white-collar criminal steals $100,000, and no one ever hears of it. But not tonight. Some white-collar criminals who have robbed their employers, stuffed their pockets, and covered their tracks have gotten caught. And now they're going public. John Stossel has heard their true confessions. And if some of the people seem as if they could be your next-door neighbor, well, that's one of the points of the story. White-collar crime. Bad checks. Investment swindles insurance scams, embezzlement. Stealing with paper is where the big money is. We all worry about violent crime, and over the past 10 years, street crime has increased. Robbery is up 7.9%, murder 10.8%, but embezzlement's up 80%. The result is that white collar crime now costs the public 10 times what we lose to street crime. To recover those losses, businesses raise prices. The result of that is that this meal, this dress, this car, this vacation, everything costs a little more because of people like Bill Robinson. I was able to take up to $2 million from banks by the time I was 28. And Paul Cote. I could shake down anybody that I wanted to hire. Now why are these crooks talking about this on television? They do it because Joe Wells asked them to. Criminals agree to cooperate with us for their own hidden agendas. Sometimes they're genuinely sorry for what they've done. Sometimes they like to brag about how smart they were. Well, the former FBI agent, is trying to teach accountants how to spot fraud. Are we more honest now than we once were? Yes, ma'am. No, we're more dishonest. We're more dishonest. Businesses pay Joe several hundred dollars to teach their accountants fraud spotting techniques. Accountants don't do a very good job of detecting fraud. One of the reasons is that they don't understand it. Another reason is that they're not very well educated about it. I thought that's what they're trained to do. No. I had a half hour's training on fraud when I was uh, going to college. Sometimes you can look at the paper and say, hey, there's something not right. but. Most of the time, the accountants are looking in the wrong places. If you had to pick one thing, what's the most important clue that somebody's stealing? The most important clue is their attitude toward the company. They're dissatisfied. They're vocal about their dissatisfaction. They don't like their superiors. They don't like their coworkers. They don't like their subordinates. They don't like their pay. So watch those people. Watch disgruntled employees. They don't like their employer. And this is their way of getting back. For goodness sake, make the effort to check him out. No transaction that if it has any, fits any categories or has any smell about it whatsoever, you shouldn't check out. And check out even the most innocent looking people, says Joe. To make that point, at his seminar, he paid Francis Ellen to attend and pose as just another accountant learning about scams. Actually, she's a convicted crook. Her scam was misappropriating her investor's money so she could gamble on real estate. So how much did you lose? <clears throat> we lost $10 million of people's, other people's money. And what happened then? And then what happened is uh, the house of cards came falling down. Uh, we were thrown into bankruptcy. Uh, we were charged criminally. Um, and uh, the balloon burst. She was jailed for 90 days. Why do you know so much about these white collar criminals? because I am a white-collar criminal. You are a white-collar criminal? Yes. Come up here. And so today, she's part of Joe's presentation, talking about how good she was at conning the accountants who, before they'd advise their clients to invest, would come to check her books. I learned how to be very, very personable to people, to be very sensitive to what their needs were, uh, to respond to their needs, maybe in small ways, uh, to build relationships with them so that I could use them. It's kind of like a dog and pony show. You bring her along to these seminars. Uh, <laughs> that, <laughs> I think a dog and pony show might be a good way to put it. Um, whatever works. If it's, uh, if it's education and people can learn from it, apply that learning, I don't mind pulling a white-collar criminal out of the cake. I mean, it's fun. It's enjoyable. It, the, the audience learns. They stay away. 
Bank Vice President McKinley Tabor embezzled more than $100,000. My rationalization was that uh, ultimately I would repay what I took. I don't know how many times I've heard people say that. Some of the people that we interview won't even admit that they've done anything wrong. It's the company's fault. It's the government's fault. It's the insurance company's fault. It's everybody but their fault. At least some of the criminals, like Paul and Francis, now blame themselves. I think that message has to get out that it's not worth it. It's not worth breaking up your life. And? Your future. It's not worth it to run the risk. It is not worth it to play the game. I lost everything that I had worked for, for years. I lost my reputation, my standing in the community. I lost the relationship with my family and my children. I still owe five million dollars to people that I am working off. So it is a high price to pay for a short reward. Uh, yeah, uh, it sure is. But, but what do you do, John? Does this mean that you're, uh, you know, uh, suspicious of everyone you work with? How do you find out who might be guilty? Yeah, I was confused about what he was telling the accountants, because yeah. business is based on trust. You can't always be suspicious. He just says you owe it to the public and to the employees to check now and then, to, to know that people, when tempted, will steal. Banks, for example, make employees take a vacation so that when they're away, if they're cooking the books, you'd find out.